there's McDermott. Dude, this guy's story is the most re unbelievable story, Kenny. Did you know about his story? Mm-hmm. He yeah. went insane. Yeah, it's really crazy. I don't know what happened to him, but... He was a champion, a he world was. champion. He, he would have been one of the best golfers if he just, you know, didn't lose it. See, madness, as you know, is like gravity. All it takes is a little push. <laughs> His name is John Joseph McDermott Jr., whose family called him JJ and at various times John, Johnny, or Jack. Remains the greatest forgotten golfer in American history. There's no one that can argue with that. A man gifted by his talent. Interesting story tied into my country club, Atlantic City Country Club, where I'm currently a member for at least one year. In uh, 1903. The term birdie? So the birdie up here too. See that? What's that? Oh, yeah. I learned this head pro at the country club back in the early 1900s. Won the first U.S. Open Championship that was a U.S. born American in 1911 and in 1912. It was back to back. In 1910, just at the age of 18, he was in a playoff to win the championship. Again, it would have been three in a row. He also remains the youngest player to win the event at what age 19 as well the second youngest to win any golf four majors after young Tom Morris. He was the first player to break par a 72 hole significant event which he did in 1912 at the US Open and was one of the world's top players between 1910 he was just 18 to 1914 and at the same time this is very impressive he was the head pro at Atlantic City so he was a champion that was working at the country club at the same time and just wrap your head around that I mean professional golfers I know they're affiliated with some golf clubs but they're not really working there like he was actually doing and winning at an early age this guy was on pace to just destroy every record out there for golf but unfortunately, mental illness is no joke. And that's what happened at the ripe age of 23, where he collapsed in the pro shop, the Atlantic City Country Club, where he was working. Now, he was only 23 years old. He had the whole life ahead of him. Everyone knew his name. He was back-to-back -back champion, US Open. Now, we gotta really kinda go back to understand who was this guy. He's from Philadelphia. That is West Side Philly at the time. Dad was a mailman, so he didn't come for money. He caddied most of his early age and was even a high school dropout. They would suspect his freshman year. Now, we caddied all over the private golf courses in Philadelphia, and there's some good ones. Where did he get his job at? His first job was at Marriageville Country Club in Cherry Hill, New Jersey, where then he moved over to Atlantic City Country Club for that currently he's not in the world golf hall of fame where he belongs i really want the takeaway from this video is for you to be frustrated because he had everything going for him more importantly his workload seemed to be a lot i mean you're winning championships and he was also portrayed as a bully he's quoted by being not that easy to be around at, at early age and the greatest game ever played that movie Oh, he was portrayed as a bully in that because he was from the United States and the two other gentlemen from UK. He was the first individual to beat him at the ripe age of 19. And that's just extreme amount of stress for someone at an early age being a world champion going back to back. And he truly believed he didn't get the recognition that he deserved. And ironically, even though he's still a champion in my eyes, he needs to be in the World Golf Hall of Fame. And that needs to be the biggest takeaway from this video. We got to get him closer to that. And whatever we need to do, let's put some heads together and make it happen. Sisters that took care of him, bringing him to golf courses on the weekend because he was institutionalized at an insane asylum from the age 23 to 81 years old. Yes, he lived to 81 and being hospitalized at the Moorestown Asylum. It did have a golf course on property, but nonetheless, 
he still spent majority of his life a world champion a little pissed off that he wasn't getting the recognition that he deserved he lost it and he still is not getting the recognition he deserves so it needs to kind of be brought up and i'm hoping this video keeping it under five minutes it's doing that hopefully we learn something here I can go on and on about this gentleman. I look forward to learning more as a social member at Atlantic City Country Club. It's a lot of history, the home of the birdie. So keep a lookout for more videos to come as we highlight wonderful forgotten history on this channel.